Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. Today I'm going to get the valve pads put back in and the new shims. If you watch the previous videos, you'll figure out how to do all that. If you remember, I have labeled all my cylinders, like this exhaust side, cylinder one left side, cylinder one right side, and so on. Cylinder three left side. I did go down to the motorcycle shop today and replace the one 70 shim with a 165, which will bump my tolerance up, or not my tolerance, but my value from 10 thousandths to 12 thousandths. Cylinder one right, cylinder one left, cylinder two right, cylinder two left, cylinder three right, and cylinder three left. So it was three left, three right, two left, two right, one left, and one right. This is the valve pad. It says to lub lubricate the valve pad with molybdenum disulfide oil. This is the valve lifter. Lubricate the valve lifter topside with molybdenum disulfide oil. Lube the valve lifter outer side with engine oil. That would be this side. And finally, install the valve lifter and the valve pad in the correct place. That's why we put everything into bags. And hopefully um, I didn't get dyslexia or something. So if you turn over way to the beginning of the manual, it has a list of all the symbols for the different lubricants. I searched the internet for like 20 minutes to figure out what molybdenum disulfide oil was. I found this Yama Lube molybdenum disulfide grease. All I could find was to take some of the engine oil and mix it with the grease to make molybdenum disulfide oil. Um, for a KLR, they were saying a 1 to 1 ratio, and other people were saying 1 to 10. But I'm going to do this. So I made this last week. It's just part grease, part oil. What I did, I'll show you real quick. So the disulfide grease is really thick. It's so thick it barely squeezes out of the bottle. Almost like a super thick. And then I just added a little engine oil to it. And kind of stirred it around. You can see how that grease is like super thick. It's almost like that epoxy that I was using on that little tool I just made. So that's still pretty thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Of course, I'm going to have to go get some more to sec. So it's just the motor oil I'm using in my engine. So I'm going to carefully just suck some out with this syringe. Okay, I'm just going to add another drop. Stir that up a little bit. I don't even know if all this is necessary because I was just talking to a guy at a motorcycle shop who's a pretty good mechanic. He's just saying use assembly lube, like say you're taking an engine apart and everything's dry, you want to coat it with something thicker like this than a grease. But he says, if you're just doing what I'm doing, you could probably just put engine oil everywhere. But I'm going to try this. That kind of looks like a molybdenum disulfide oil. So basically, if you just had some kind of lubricant here, I think the real issue, though, is to try to get that little valve pad in this hole without dropping it. And if you put some there with some really thick grease and then you went to put the cap on, it might like suck the valve pad off on you. So I think thinner would probably be better than thicker because I'm going to set those shims right on here and then slide the buckets on. So I'm going to start with one right. And I think I'm just going to put some oil on here. I don't even have the pad in there yet. And I'm going to put some gloves on real quick, just a sec. So I have this little suction cup on here. 
that I showed you before. And then I've had, I have that oil I put on here. I'm just going to, they say it should slide up and down easily in here. Let's check. Well, that's sliding really nice. I'm going to put a little of that molybdenum, it's hard to say, molybdenum disulfide oil right there. I have the 165 shim that I calculated on that. It used to be 189. I'm just going to put some of the disulfide oil in here. The thin coating looks good. Putting a little on the valve pad. Now if I can just get it in here without dropping it. actually fit in there pretty nice making sure it's all the way down doesn't seem to want to fall off as much as I thought it would this is actually an aftermarket shim but it is sticking up above the surface a little so that's what we want because there's actually a raised hump inside here so I'm ready to slide this one in Take off my little suction cup. Actually, I think that works as good or better than a magnet. Everybody says use a magnet, but like I said in my other video, someone said it could magnetize this. May or may not be a problem, but the suction cup works really well. So here's one left, which is this one. I'll just do one more of these on the camera and then do the other ones off camera. So cylinder one, left side. I could see how this would be super easy to mess up. So the little suction cup. And some oil. Actually, doing this one a little opposite. I'd put the oil on here and check it first before I put the disulfide grease on the pad. But that one feels good. Might not be bad to buy that valve lapper tool because this is hard to hold on to, but it works. I'm just doing this one again with some oil. Feels good. Making sure it's smooth. So I put the valve pad in. Don't want to drop this. Making sure it's sitting in there flush. If it's not in there properly, it's going to mess you up later because we're going to have to recheck all these tolerances. Like if you go watch the video I did on checking the tolerance, we're going to have to do that when we're done with all this and we get the camshafts in. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, the rest of them. And then I'm going to come back on the next video will be to get the camshafts back in here. Thanks for watching.